Well, I told you that composing a, a lyrical improvisation is an art and not a science. At least that's my opinion. <clears throat> Let me give you this, this example or analogy. We all speak a language, and the languages are made up of words. And most people have a reasonable vocabulary. Yet, when it comes time to speak and to express ourselves, some people are more effective communicators of their ideas than others. Okay? Think of Shakespeare, Winston Churchill, or Obama, and you'll understand what I'm saying. And so it is with music. All musicians know the notes of a scale. And, and the interesting thing is that there are only seven notes. Well, you know, they're the they're, they're the semitones that the five semitones that can go in. But essentially there are only seven notes. And the music we can say are or is like words. But yet some musicians are able to compose songs, beautiful songs, phrases, riffs and improvisations better than others can. And why is this? Well, there's not a single answer to this conundrum. But there is one thing that I can tell you, <laughs> as I said to you just now, and of course this is only my assessment, and perhaps I can be proven wrong. But my view is that it is more an art than it is a science. And as you know, an art is something that you have to learn for yourself. It's something that comes from within you, maybe from your heart. I don't know. But look, there are, I said there are useful ground rules that are helpful. So let's review some of these tools which you already have in your grab bag. Well, first of all, there is the starting of your improvisation. You start on a note and it is generally better to proceed and go up the scale or down the scale, essentially taking small steps, you know, small go small increments at a time, you know, if you if you started on uh, on 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 air, you know, you might like to go A depending on the scale of course, you might like to go A A B C A C B, C, D, or whatever, you know, small increments, that's what I'm trying to say. It is generally found that this works better than making big jumps, you know, up and down, and backwards and forwards, and flying all over the, the scale as you play. Then another useful uh, tool is to use periods of silence. Uh, s some musicians like to say that the, that periods of silence give the, the note give the notes time to breathe. Um, but of course, this is just um, a poetic a poetic expression, I suppose. Which is to say, you know, play a few notes, allow a pause, you know, for a beat or so of silence, and then carry on from, from time to time. The other thing is is to use repetition. 
you know, a repetition of notes and phrases. You know, you play a note, pim, 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 pim. All right, repeat the notes. Uh, and also repeat the phrase. You know, if you, you play a phrase, pim, 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 pim. You know, play it again. Pim, 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 pim. Yeah? So repeat notes and phrases. The other thing is to use chromaticism. And this means, you know, insert a semitone here and there, or, or, or more or less, between, the, you know, the notes that you play. Okay? Let me see if uh, perhaps I might be able to make a, a short demonstration of, of, of what it is I, I just said. You know? Periods of silence repetition of notes, chromaticism. You know, suppose, uh, suppose you played Yeah? You see? Or you can come back and you could throw in um, uh, uh, some semitones. Yeah, just a just a little, little illustration to to illustrate the point. Okay, another thing that you can do sometimes is to are to use the, the pentatonic scales or even a foreign scale, and if I may say. Uh, I've got all this data, you know, in some in some tutorial visit videos that I've done. Just look for improvising with pentatonic scales or using foreign scales, and um, I've got some stuff there. Another good assistant, a good good technique, is to play the card tones. Um, let me explain. You play the notes of the card over the card of the moment. Let's suppose you were improvising a song, and the card at the moment is C major. You know, and this card is going to be held for, say, six or eight beats, you know, a reasonable length of time. The notes of the card, of the C card, as you, as you know, are C, E, and G. But you may not want to just play these three notes, you know, for the whole duration of the time, because perhaps it could get boring or uninteresting. So one of the things you could do is to turn the the triad C card into, say, uh, C major 9, which would be the notes C, E, G, B, D. And what you could do with, the, with these notes now is, you know, play them, you could repeat some of the notes, you know, C, E, G, G, B, D, D, whatever. You could maybe uh, allow a period of, of silence. Okay, you could try um, throwing in a semitone or two. For example, you could you could try you could try playing um, something like um, C, E flat, E, silence. E, G, G sharp, A, A, B. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Or something like that, um, if you catch any drift. You know, it's all about experimenting, practicing, trying various approaches, listening to great players, and developing your own style, isn't it? Okay, I want to play some improvisations for you so that we can discuss but I'm looking at the clock here, and you know, all, all magic hour is coming up. So I'm going to close off here and move over to the next video, which will be what? Um, episode 7. I'll see you there in a moment, and let's analyze some improvisations. Okay, I look for the link in the margin. Godspeed.